It's been about three months now since I applied liquid metal to my GTX 1070. And after I posted that video, I had a lot of people warn me that it's in fact unsafe to do. Now, we know that liquid metal thermal compounds are unsuitable for aluminium heatsinks. I mean, it's pretty much everywhere you look. The reason for this is that the elements that make up the liquid metal compound will eventually oxidize the aluminium heatsink, causing quite a bit of corrosion over time. This is obviously something that you don't want happening to your PC components, and that's why we see these warnings everywhere. However, what happens if you apply it to your GPU dies contact area like I did, which is made of nickel? Liquid metal manufacturers deem it safe, but it's still frightening for some beginners. Now, before we pull the card apart and take the cooler off, let's see if temperatures at full gaming load have increased over the last three months when I first applied the liquid metal. During that three months, I've done my fair share of gaming, but to say that I've been monitoring my GPU temps and fan speed along the way would be a bit of a lie. So when we first applied the liquid metal in April, load temperatures sat at 81 degrees C at around 55% fan speed. And three months later, you can see that nothing has changed. I'm using the same fan profile, same case, and ambient temperatures are similar as well. So from this, we know that the GPU temps do not increase over time, at least over the span of three months. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the liquid metal hasn't started eating away at the nickel plated contact on the GPU, as some have claimed it will. So let's take a look under the hood. Dismantling the graphics card and lifting up the heatsink, let's first take a look at the GPU. I've seen a few people claim that liquid metal dries up over time, which would be a huge concern, but that's not what we're seeing here. The thermal compound is still liquid and is still the same consistency as when I first applied it. After some thorough cleaning with alcohol wipes, we start to reveal the GP104 GPU underneath. And honestly, it did feel a little rough to the touch as I was wiping away the compound, not the smooth surface that I was initially expecting. The nickel plated surface does look a little faded in some areas, mostly around the center, but I can't say for sure whether this was due to the liquid metal thermal compound or from removing and refitting the copper heatsink when I first swapped out the compound. I say this because some of the marks almost look like scratches, whereas other areas do look a little faded out, possibly from the liquid metal. Now let's take a look at the copper heatsink. Here we can see a little more fade on the surface, but this is fairly common wear over time for a copper heatsink. If the liquid metal compound truly was oxidizing and corroding the surface of the copper plate here, we would be able to see a noticeable brown and black discoloration on the alcohol wipes as we clean away at the surface. But as you can see here, we can only see the gray thermal compound. So after hundreds of hours of gaming over the last three months, I'd say that both the GPU die contact and heatsink are absolutely fine. And I'd consider this fairly normal wear. Perhaps the liquid metal did contribute to a slightly more faded surface finish, but it's not the layers of corrosion and dried up thermal compound that some people are claiming occurs. Now, putting the card back together, I decided to reapply the liquid metal, but this time applying it to both the GPU die and the heatsink, seeing as this is something that you guys strongly suggested when I first applied it. However, since both the heatsink and the GPU die are in direct contact, I wasn't really sure how this could really help. But some of you suggested that it's because the liquid metal doesn't adhere so well to the copper plate, so I decided to give this a shot while reinstalling it. And after gaming for around 20 minutes, there doesn't seem to be any difference at all when compared to my original method of just applying it to the GPU. That's not to say that you won't have success with applying it to both, just remember to apply really thin layers if that's something you want to try. Now, I know in my initial video, I concluded that it wasn't really worth applying liquid metal to your GPU, given the small three degree drop that I experienced on my Founders Edition card. But since then, a lot of you have reached out to me in the comments and talked about your success, with some of you even reporting drops of up to 15 degrees. It seems that with blower style cards, the thermal bottleneck isn't the thermal conductivity between the heatsink and the GPU, but instead it's the heat dissipation. It doesn't matter how well you're conducting heat from your GPU, if you can't dissipate it with adequate cooling, it'll just hang around on your heatsink. This is in contrast to the open air style coolers that you see on most aftermarket boards from MSI, EVGA and ASUS for example, where there is adequate cooling, with sometimes up to three fans, with the main thermal bottleneck being the thermal conductivity between the GPU contact area and the heatsink and this is likely why we see a large drop when applying liquid metal compound to that style of GPU. So let me know what you guys think, we'd love to chat in the comments, let me know if you've had success with using liquid metal on your processes and as always I'll see you all in the next one.